question. Have you ever wondered if a place corresponding with the Book of Mormon's description of the Valley of Lemuel really exists? So after Lehi and his family fled Jerusalem, Nephi described his oldest brothers, Laman and Lemuel, as, well, not happy campers. Grumbling and murmuring, calling Lehi a visionary man. Which, I guess, is an ancient way of saying, Dad's gone a bit crazy? Well, look at it from their point of view. They've left their comfortable lands of inheritance, all their worldly wealth, to perish, or so they thought, in a desert wilderness. Their conflict with their father came to a head as they established their first long-term encampment in a valley by the side of a river. I remember. This is where Lehi finally declared to Laman, Oh, that thou mightest be like unto this river, continually running into the fountain of all righteousness. Then to Lemuel, Oh, that thou mightest be like unto this valley, firm and steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of the Lord. Lehi's words had their desired effect. His oldest sons were literally shaken, confounded to silence and compelled to obedience. Uh, for a while, anyway. Nephi's descriptions of the landscape are pretty impressive as well and surprisingly detailed. First, they arrived down by the borders near the shore of the Red Sea. Then, they traveled near the shoreline for three days to reach a valley by the side of a river of water. Must have been a unique setting if it inspired Lehi to wax so poetic. What I'd like to know is whether the descriptions correlate to specific locations. Well, yeah. Joseph Smith couldn't have known much about the landscape south of Jerusalem especially a valley with a continually flowing river. We can pretty easily surmise that the first place Lehi would have encountered the Red Sea is near the ancient port known today as Aqaba. Okay, but after that, there has to be a valley with a continually flowing river and within a three-day journey. Do they even have rivers in that part of the world? Just wadis, what we call washes or arroyos. Dry as dust much of the year. That's what I thought. Except for one. One river? More of a stream. In Hebrew, river and stream are the same word. However, in ancient times, a river might have been more accurate. Today, much of its water is reallocated to populated areas. Here's the best part. Its perennial waters flow out of a stunning valley with steep granite cliffs called Wadi Taib al-Isham. Taib al-Isham. Discovered in 1995 by Latter-day Saint explorers George Potter and Craig Thorsted. You mean rediscovered? I should say first identified as having a possible Book of Mormon correlation. How far south of Aqaba? A three days journey? Typically, for an ancient caravanner, daily travel ranged between 15 and 25 miles. The distance between Wadi Taib al Ashim and Aqaba is. You're expecting a drum roll? 74 miles. Whoa. Right on the money. Within the maximum distance. And it happens to be the only stream in Northwest Arabia that continually flows into the Red Sea just as Nephi's account describes. Even with so much reallocated water? Admittedly, except for wetter times of the year, it falls just short of the Red Sea. But in ancient times, a genuine river. We can't be certain, but that is what science and local geology suggests. Does it strike you as unusual when Lehi describes the Valley of Lemuel as firm, steadfast, and immovable? I might describe a mountain like that, not a valley. Ah, that's because you're a Westerner. Latter-day Saint scholar Hugh Nibley noted that to an Arab, a valley is a symbol of permanence, not a mountain. If you're seeking refuge, you don't flee to a mountain, but to a protected valley. Hmm, makes sense. And as far as protection, imagine a valley with 2,000 foot vertical granite cliffs flanking a perennial stream. Sounds perfect if you're looking to camp there a while. Warren Aston, who has carefully explored this region, says no other place evokes Lehi's emotive language. So Lehi poetically comparing his sons to the local geography becomes further evidence of the Book of Mormon's authenticity. That is what the evidence suggests. You decide. <laughs>